Mr. Cerritos. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you today? Good, how are you? I am excellent. Council President is with us, and I am going to turn it over to our very own Detroit City Council President, Brenda Jones. Good evening to everyone. It is again good to see your smiling faces, and I think everybody is smiling, and it's good to know that you are here with us today, not just on this Zoom call, small business, but that you are with us alive in living color, as they would say. We know that so much has happened and we have lost so many of our loved ones these days with a pandemic and with a COVID-19 until I do not take anything for granted. And so when I see you all, I just say it's good to see you and it truly is good to see you. Um, we are again here this afternoon at our small business fair and we are on second part of our fair, um, which we'll be talking about um, permits, outdoor cafe permits. And I, my colleague will probably be joining us shortly as she just left off for a moment as we concluded part one a little early. But it is so good to see Ariel uh, this morning. I'm, I'm sorry this evening. You know, it seems like I've been Zooming all day long. I, I, you know, I laugh because I say we are Zooming now, but to me, I think I'm working harder now on these Zoom calls because it's Zoom call behind Zoom call behind Zoom call in <laughs> meetings that normally I'm doing. So um, it is good to see you all here with us this evening. Ari L. Johnson is here with us and Penelope is here as well. And I also see Lily Hamburger with us and Mr. Sharapas with us. And so we are just so good. Glad to, to see you all here with us as we talk about uh, and give an overview of the outdoor cafe process. And so if you want to, I'm gonna turn it over to you to you all and you all can take the show and run with it. I'm gonna turn it over to the staff who can take the show and run with the questions and answers. And it is your show. So the producers may do their thing. Thank you all again for being here. Ms. Johnson. Awesome. So um, thank you so much, uh, Council President. I feel like I get to talk to you almost every other day now. Uh, so thank you for having me. Um, the, the, this initiative was definitely a team effort. Um, Charity Dean, our director of the Civil Rights Inclusion and Opportunity Department, um, has worked collectively um, with um, DPW, the Department of Public Works, and BC, uh, and DEGC, um, to get a lot of initiatives going in order to ensure um, that there is equity and support for the small businesses, especially as we face um, the impacts of COVID-19. Um, so uh, Lily and Caitlin are definitely going to give us a lot more substantial information, but I just wanted to share the, um, the intent and the intentionality that the Department of Civil Rights Inclusion and Opportunity has and making sure that we're combating barriers for Detroiters, um, for Detroit small businesses, um, and, and making sure that we're collaborating with other departments within the city of Detroit to make sure that those happen. And so um, folks like Caitlin, who are rock stars and make sure that things happen, um, are, are it's, it's amazing. I feel like I get the opportunity to meet more people right now on Zoom calls during COVID than I did when I was walking around KMAC. And so um, Caitlin's one of the rock stars I've had the opportunity to meet during COVID via Zoom. So we've never actually met each other in person. Um, but she's been able to, to help push this forward and, and make sure that there's guidelines and resources for businesses so they understand how to execute this process, which quite frankly looks really user friendly um, from our end. And so um, I'm gonna let Caitlin go into that. Um, and I know it's gonna go live this week and it's gonna allow businesses to be able to um, keep their operations and potentially expand their operations in regards to the 50% capacity that they would um, originally be confined to if they were not to have these resources um, that um, one is being allowed by city council. So thank you for that um, as well as as um, BC at DPW. So, Caitlin, I'll let you um, take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. 
Great. Thank you, Ariel, and thank you, President Jones and Councilmember Ayers for the invite and for the topic this evening. Um, so this week, the governor has announced that starting on June 8th, which is Monday, uh, restaurants will be able to open uh, for dine-in service. And that dine-in service will be restricted to 50% capacity. And the city and city or city administration and city council put their heads together to see how we could best benefit our small businesses with changes to some of the bureaucratic processes that we've had in line for a long time. One of those things is applying for an outdoor cafe permit. So traditionally an outdoor cafe permit would require a restaurant owner to apply in the clerk's office and to go through a series of about eight different departmental reviews and to eventually go to be voted on by city council. Um, in these unprecedented times and knowing that the pain that the pandemic has put on small businesses, especially restaurants, we put our heads together and thought that we should make it much easier to allow for safe access to restaurants and safety for both patrons that want to dine in at restaurants as well as the staff that serve at those restaurants. And we have come up with a new program that we have named Open Detroit and it will go live tomorrow morning. And um, what this program essentially does is takes a process that used to take 60 days to complete for a small business and it turns it around in about a day. And what that means is that small businesses, restaurants in particular, they will go on to a website. They will be able to download a guidebook for safe practices during the pandemic of how restaurants can open and again, serve customers safely and keep their staff safe. Um, and they will be able to read that guidebook and order whatever they might need to be able to set up in a safe manner. They will go on to a form on the website that will allow for them to register on that same day um, for the, to register their interest to open an outdoor cafe on the sidewalk and or in a parking lot adjacent to their business. That day, the day they go on, they will receive permission as long as they sign off on the fact that they will follow the city's new health guidelines for operating those outdoor cafe spaces. They will be then able to be set up their cafe and they will be able to start making money on day one. That is great news, but we also have two other programs that we'll be offering. So the first program again, you will be able to go on to the website, register your restaurant and start operating on day one should you have all of the things that you need in place. And that will allow you to operate on the sidewalk as well as if you have an adjacent parking lot in, to your business and you can use 50% of the parking spaces in that parking lot to put tables in. The two other programs are one that would allow you to use the parking spaces in what the city is calling a parklet in front of your restaurant to extend your dining space and add additional tables. There are some safety parameters that we need to put in place before you can use that program. So it will require three business days for the city to get back to you and let you know if you should be using cones or barrels and how you can set that up to make sure it's again safe for you and your customers. The third program that we're offering is called the uh, Restaurant Recovery Zone. And this is for areas that have a density of restaurants, perhaps on a block or two, that we would, um, you can apply and we would allow for you to close down the, that block and bring your tables out and spread at a safe distance between the curbs on the street. So vehicles would no longer be able to drive those blocks, but you would be able to offer more capacity for your restaurant to serve at tables. This again requires a lot of safety precautions and detours and working with our partners at the Detroit Fire Department and the Police Department to make sure that there's emergency access. And so this again will require a longer review time, but we're looking between three and five days to get back to you and say that you've been approved. We will close down that street and you and your neighbors restaurants can pull your tables out onto that street. 
So again, we're partnering with city council as well as our sister departments to be as flexible as possible to help our small businesses recover from what we know has been a great financial hardship during the pandemic. Again, there is going to be published guidelines and an application that will go live tomorrow morning. And the program is called Open Detroit. And we encourage everybody that is interested to take a look at the guidelines, decide which path is appropriate for their business and to apply as soon as possible so that we can get you up and running after uh, June 8th, which is when the governor has allowed for Detroit to continue um, sit down dining operations in the city limits. So that is the explanation of the program. Oh, one more thing, I'm sorry. We need to announce the website. So we mean business, um, Detroit.org is the website that, um, that you will visit to find that application and guidelines. It's Detroit means business. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right, Lily. <laughs> Detroit means business, not we mean business Detroit. Again, DetroitMeansBusiness.org. Detroit means business, all one word, dot org. O R G. I guess I'll jump in after Caitlin's explanation of um, what they have been working so hard on, and I want to express my gratitude to. Caitlin and her department for the, all the hard work they've put in on this important program to Ariel and her department. And of course, for council president and member Ayers and your staff for putting this together. Um, this has been a very um, stressful and difficult time for small business owners and for all of us in the city of Detroit um, and really uh, globally. Um, so this is an important program to getting everyone back on their feet and breathing life back into our, our thriving community. So thank you. Um, I wanted to add some information about the website that Caitlin mentioned where this information will be opening up tomorrow. DetroitMeansBusiness.org has a lot of information for not only restaurants, but small businesses of all types. If you have questions about how to safely operate or reopen your business in this COVID environment, you can find a lot of information there, including a playbook on safe reopening um, and and it includes really helpful resources like a checklist and things to keep in mind when communicating with your staff and with your customers. The website also includes um, access to one on one expert assistance if you need help with kind of reimagining or reorganizing how your business operates in this time and we are um, offering staff to walk you through all the resources on the website. So if you go to DetroitMeansBusiness.org, you'll find a help form that you can fill out to request assistance with anything you might need to get your business up and running in a safe way. Um, and I'll also share the phone number to our contact center. It is 844-333-8249. And again, that is how you can access help with any resources that you need in safely reopening your business. So um, there's a lot out there for you. and this new program that Caitlin just described to allow restaurants to operate with as much capacity as possible is, is really fantastic. So I encourage everyone to um, take a look at that and make the right decision for your business. Thanks everyone. All right, awesome. Uh, uh, Ariel, do you have any other information that you would like to provide? Uh, nothing else at this time, no. All right. Well, I guess, Jalen, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay. I think we're ready to do the uh, go to our question. See if it, we have any callers uh, that have any questions. Okay, do we have any callers? You can raise your hand by pressing star nine. If we have any callers that have a question they would like to ask.
Okay, if you, have, if you have any questions uh, for our panelists, this would be a great time to ask them. I do see one hand. Yeah, we have one hand, uh, caller 405. These are the last three digits of your cell phone number. You are unmuted. Hi, thank you so much for providing all this information. I have a couple of questions. Um, the first is for people that are um, needing to update their licensing with the MLCC so that they can serve alcohol. Um, will you be providing any kind of, you know, actual permit or form that they can use for that application? I'll take that question, Ms. Wesley, if you don't mind. Certainly. Um, so. In Michigan, there is a two-step um, liquor license in order for restaurants to serve alcohol. First is for the, um, the, the license just to serve alcohol in general in your establishment. And then the second is a, an add-on license approval that allows you to serve alcohol outdoors. The state has worked to make sure that they are trying to expedite that second process. So if you are a restaurant establishment who has a liquor license, who maybe has never served alcohol outdoors before, but because of the pandemic, um, you are looking to add capacity um, to the outdoors in the ways that we had just mentioned. If you go to the Michigan Liquor Control Board's website um, and you click on the link to apply for outdoor service, um, they are expediting the approval of that uh, liquor license add-on or addendum, if you will, um, onto your onto your current licensing. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm kind of just looking through the the PDF as you're talking, but it looks like you're still maintaining, you know, ADA requirements and all of that. Is that what the inspectors would be checking for when they come out? Yes. So there will be um, inspectors that are coming out to make sure that there's ADA compliance. We again, we have to make sure that we um, allow for our all communities of all sorts to still be able to traverse the block, uh, which is part of the reason why we opened up the program to allow for the parking spaces to be used for dining and then again for the street full street closures if um, that works out in your particular situation. Um, because we do know that some restaurants happen to be on very narrow city sidewalks. So we're trying to be as flexible as possible to make sure that we're serving all of our communities, but also again, giving um, great advantage to our restaurant communities that have been hit so hard. Um, another, another key thing that is in those guidelines are um, uh, guidelines of how to operate safely. So there needs to be further spacing between tables. Um, obviously, if, you're got, if you are dining with, with folks that you've been sheltering in place with, but the table next to you are um, strangers, we might want to make sure that there's just further separation there. And we've worked very closely with the city's um, infectious disease specialist to make sure that the guidelines that we're putting forward put customers at your restaurants in the safest position possible. Great. Thank you so much. Great. Okay, do we have anyone else that has a question for our panelists? Please feel free to push star nine if you have any questions. If you have any Facebook questions, if you will, um, if you will write them out, we will read your question. All right, now we have caller 290. You are unmuted. Hello, I was wondering, uh, do you have any uh, setup for food vendors, um, food truck vendors? I know that that is an, a concern that there is no licensing, or is it any um, upcoming uh, time frame for food trucks? Is there anyone that can answer, take that question? Um, Ms. Wesley, I'll answer it to the best of my ability at this current time. Thank you. Um, so our food trucks, so we have many food trucks that are, are existing to operate out of private parking lots uh, for carry out only right now. The city has been um, approached by food truck operators asking if our public parks and plazas may be a space that they could set up in for 
um, not only carry out, but also sit down dining type um, setups. Uh, we do not currently have a program for that, but we have been approached and asked and the, the departments um, that need to be reviewing what policies would have to change are currently doing so. So I don't have a full answer for you, uh, but just that it has come up and that we are reviewing those, uh, those policies right now, but it's not something we have a program for at this moment. Oh, okay, thank you. But uh, caller, if you will call our office, um, if you will call our office at 224-1245, uh, I, I do recall receiving a question very similar and perhaps maybe I can put you in contact with someone in building, sa in building safety and engineering and they will be able to uh, assist you. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Okay, so we do have a caller but there is no number attached. Uh, so I will unmute you and hopefully you will know it's you. You can speak now. Yes, hello. You can go. Go ahead and ask, yeah. ask your yeah, okay. question. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so basically, I wanted to ask a clarifying question. If a restaurant business would like to do um, get a permit for seating in their parking lot, that would be the first program, correct? And that would be at a 50% usage? Yes. So when um, the application process opens, which is tomorrow morning, um, you would be able to register your business and you would check the box that you intend to open outdoor dining in a, in a parking, a customer parking lot adjacent to your building. And that allows you to immediately on June 8th set up at 50% of that parking lot. So if you have 10 spaces, you can use five of those spaces for the outdoor dining. Um, you do have to have a barrier around that outdoor dining space that delineates where diners are sitting and where cars are allowed to drive. Um, but if you register with the city, again, on, on the registration form, that gives you an immediate permit and allows you to sign up in your part or to sign up to use your parking lot at 50% capacity for outdoor dining. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was, uh, there was a question on Facebook and it says, will the sizing of patios be on the website as well, such as the building where my restaurant sits on uh, is 45 feet wide. I'm curious to see what approximate space would be allowed. Uh, it's lo locate, located on the 1200 block of Woodward. So the, um, the, the short answer to that is that we, DPW will allow for you to set up outdoor dining in front on the sidewalk in front of your business for the length of your business frontage. So if you have 50 feet of fit business frontage, you can set that up within that entire 50 feet. Um, again, you have to follow the guidelines. Your tables have to be spaced in such a way. You have to provide for six feet ADA clearance for um, people to continue to use the sidewalk, but we will allow you to use the entire frontage of your building in order to set up that outdoor dining. Thank Excellent. you. Okay, so it looks like we have another caller. The last three digits of the number is 281. Caller, you un are unmuted. Yes, I mean, so I'm just asking uh, how the measurement up, the dimensions, and uh, how the inspectors come into the place and see how many capacity we have. I'm sorry, sir, could you repeat that, please? Yes, uh, I'm asking uh, how, how do uh, or the city uh, let us know how many people getting in the building or in the parking lot, uh, how, how they measure it up. The, uh. So I think that the question is, how are we going to inspect capacity um, yes. on your, at your restaurant? Okay, great. 
Um, so again, the, uh, the guidelines that will be published tomorrow for Open Detroit will talk about the spacing between tables um, and the spacing between customers. And so our inspectors will come out to be making sure that your tables and your chairs are spaced at a safe distance. And we will be ensuring that, um, that you're abiding by the protocols that are in those guidelines. In terms of the 50% capacity indoors, that again will, will be relying on what your previous capacity was as, as um, outlined by the fire marshal and by BC. And they will also be looking at your table spacing and how many people you have uh, or that you'd be able to have in your, in your establishment. We are, again, we're trying to give everybody the benefit of the doubt that we're operating in a safe manner. And that's why we are giving automatic permits. But um, council has, uh, has graciously granted us the permission um, to be able to inspect these. And if we do find that people are out of compliance and are unwilling to come into compliance, that is when our inspectors would then have to talk about revoking uh, permits to use these outdoor spaces. But to, to begin again, we're giving everybody the benefit of the doubt that you are going to follow these guidelines and you are gonna take the safety of yourselves and your customers very seriously. And then we will be doing follow-up inspections after that. Those inspections will be done by the Department of Public Works, uh, the Department of Building Safety, Environmental and Engineering, and then also the health department will be coming out as well. All right. Okay, so if we do have any new callers, you can press star nine to ask a question. If you have a question, please press star nine. Linda, do we have any more questions on Facebook? Uh, not at this time, Jalen. Okay. Okay, well, it is 628 and uh, I'd like to take this time since we don't have any other questions. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity just to say thank you to our panelists, uh, Ariel, Lily, uh, Caitlin, you ladies rock. You ladies rock. What can we say? Uh, Leslie. It's always a joy to have you all on as a, a part of our panel. You all have so much wonderful and invaluable information to share with our listening audience. So I just want to take this time to say thank you all once again for have, allowing us to have such a wonderful small business empowerment event. Uh, Jalen, you have some closing words? Um, I just want to say thank you, uh, for everyone, for participating. It was a great, you know, time to get some information. Thank you, Ariel, Caitlin, and Lily on behalf of Councilmember Ayers, and uh, we hope to see you next time. Also, we're having a coffee and conversation tomorrow. It's at 10 a.m. It will be with the Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson. And we will be getting a lot of information from her. So hopefully everybody can tune in tomorrow and get some more knowledge. And don't Thank forget, you. oh, I'm sorry, Jalen. I was no, just about to say, the floor don't, is yours. don't forget to join Council President tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. for our spiritual uh, and mental wellness. Uh, we have, it's an hour a powerful hour of prayer and you all are invited that telephone number again uh, is on our flyer we will have the flyer on our Facebook page please uh, if you need any information go to council president's Facebook page is Facebook forward slash CP Brenda Jones you will find everything that you ever needed to find on our Facebook page. And at this time, we thank you so much again. Thank you to our, our panel that uh, again, and thank you to all of the people that called in and to everyone that's watching on Facebook. Thank you and have a good evening. Good night. Good night.